So here we go. It's still the evening before the freeze warning. 6 o'clock p.m. right now. And outside it's 44 degrees. So I spent about an hour getting everything dialed in. Doing a test run, you could say. Uh, just making sure that everywhere I've got a sprinkler head that it's reaching the trees that need the water, the ones in bloom. And I found that by placing one of the sprinklers right over there near the Santa Rosa plum and then also there's a plum cot tree over there the Santa Rosa plum is in bloom that sprinkler head is able to reach that tree and also get all the greens that are in this bed I got Ashitaba and in the pathways over here I got some cabbage and broccoli and also some pak choy and I'm able to run at the same time this other sprinkler head so they're both running at 50% power but I'm also able to hit the Santa Rosa plum tree that's over on this side. And the other sprinkler head is right there towards the middle of the garden. And that hits all of these fruit trees. This is a hedgerow of dwarf fruit trees. And about half of them are blooming right now. And so that sprinkler reaches all those. There's also a citrus tree here. And there's some greens growing. We got some kale and some cilantro. Amongst other things, there's some flowers starting to come up and things, so. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is let each cycle go for 10, maybe 15 minutes. That seems to be the point where the trees are dripping with water. And uh, I'm just going to manually switch them back and forth. So, a little bit of work, but that's okay. Like I said, I could put these on a timer. But being that this is my first time using the system, I want to be out here monitoring and learn from the experience. I've also got my sandbox or my propagation station all tucked in for the night covered with greenhouse plastic. And I also did a really quick install of this LED work light up here. That'll help brighten things up when I come out here early in the morning. Actually does a really good job. My neighbors are going to probably think I'm crazy, but they'll probably be sleeping, so... So yes, I'm serious about success, and also I want to learn as much as I can about this process, making it easier for the future. So in the future, you know, if this works out like I think it's going to, I can have this system fully set up, like what I'm doing now, all on automatic timers, and not have to worry about it much. It could be a lot less work than this was, but this was only like an hour. I'd say this was a time saver compared to trying to put uh, frost blankets, greenhouse plastic, that sort of thing, over these trees. But stay tuned, I'm going to turn the camera back on when I do get up in the middle of the night. And uh, we'll look at what the temperature reading is. And we'll head out here if we need to. I mean, there's always a chance that it'll stay above that 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That'd be great. I'd be happy to have done too much here rather than not enough. So, see you in a little bit. We hit the 32 degree Fahrenheit marker a little earlier than I thought we would. I don't want to wait too long before I get out there and start doing cycles. Uh, I don't want to risk any chance of my hoses freezing, not being able to get any water out there. But uh, yeah, it's definitely earlier than I expected. According to the weather um, online, it was supposed to not get this cold until somewhere like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. So it's shaping up to be uh, perhaps a long night, but that's okay. You know, I knew what I signed up for when I decided to go the route I did. So now I'm about to head out there and get a cycle going. Yeah, it's cold, as you can see by my breath. There's already some frost forming on the ground. See all that twinkling? It's little ice crystals. And I did actually turn off the hose earlier. Just to try to avoid, you know, any chance of the hoses freezing. But I know there's still some residual water left in those hoses.
so that stuttered for a minute it was already beginning to freeze up so it's good I came out here when I did and same thing with this one over here it shot off for a second and then it kind of got stuck and it's probably gonna do what that one just did loosen up and go one does all right there's some liquid coming out and just as with the other ones it was close to already being clogged up with ice there it goes no There it goes. Nope. <laughs> it's literally got ice cubes in the line. I'm actually in the kitchen filling my water cans with some hot water to pour over that last hose. Uh, when I squeeze it, it feels like a slushy inside. So in order to get that water running. So I literally just traced the line uh, with the hot water from the container, this is a 100 foot rubber hose. And when I got about three quarters of the way, it opened up and took off. So, the theory is, is that with a constant flow of water going through the line, uh, it should prevent it from freezing. So I'm gonna keep doing intervals out here. And see, this is why I decided to actually come out here and do this. I'm already learning something, which is, you know, if I would have actually buried these hose lines, like d dug a little trench with like a pickaxe, just a just a little, you know, would have been easy enough to do. I've got a lot of this hose is actually buried. Like right here, you can see it just goes into the wood chips. And from this point, this hose is buried. And that's probably why uh, that was the sprinkler I had the least amount of uh, resistance from. But I could have easily trenched these hoses down, you know, underneath the surface and probably uh, kept it from actually turning into a slushy. So what's really cool right now is that I found that I'm able to run both or I'm able to run two sprinklers at the same time and I'm getting full coverage so over here you can see by the bird bath we've got the aprium and the apricot the almond tree everything everything's getting fully saturated right now All the way around the tree I was most concerned of the peach tree I can go inside now I'll come back out here in another 20 minutes or so and switch over the sprinklers I'm actually pretty cold and wet but that's okay um, I'm happy everything's running now the sprinklers are up and going so now all I really need to do is go out there every, I said 10 minutes to 15 minutes before, I probably think I'm going to actually wait something like 20 minutes just to limit the amount of interaction I got to put into this. Alright guys, well we're down to 28 degrees now and I've been going out there every 25 minutes or so at this point, um, just switching the sprinklers on and off. I did at one point pull out some timers to see if I could get those set up. And unfortunately, those, the timers that I have don't allow you to just uh, set them on a cycle of 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. They only give you a choice of three cycles. So I'm going to be doing this manually for the rest of the day or the night, I should say. So one thing I'll say is that the sprinklers 
are, have been running flawlessly so that continuous flow of water through the hose and the sprinklers uh, stops them from freezing up. So check this out. This is a Santa Rosa plum tree and it hasn't been watered for the last 25 minutes. I'm about to cycle the water back on. So there you have it. Everything seems to be working out just fine. And I went from being super tired a minute ago inside to being super wide awake because <laughs> it's so dang cold out here. And uh, also excited just to see how everything's been turning out. So uh, it's exciting stuff. I'm not quite done with this video yet. Uh, there'll be a few more updates um, as we go along. But I'm going to head back in now. So we ran into another little issue. I had the sprinkler turned off for about a half an hour. And now you can see it's struggling. So we've got some slushy happening in the hose here. At least we've got some kind of flow. But that's what I'm learning here, um, how much time I can go in between off and on. And now it's starting to pick up some steam here. I was going to go get another... Oh, there it goes. There it goes. I was going to go get another watering can of warm water and pour it on the hose, but that flow of water was enough to bring it back out. So at 28 degrees, I don't want to wait longer than 25 minutes. It's still not full power, but that's enough to where it's going to get stronger and stronger. There it goes. Back up. Back up and running. I'd be lying to you if I told you that at this point, this isn't kind of scaring the heck out of me. I mean, the flowers are just complete frozen ice cubes. So it's about 5.30 in the morning at this point. Uh, we're down to 26 degrees. And uh, yeah, things are looking kind of crazy. <laughs> sure hope this works. But um, we're just about an hour and a half or so away from things starting to warm up again. So I made it this far, we're almost to the end. And this will be interesting to see how uh, everything ends up turning out. So check back with you in a little bit. You gotta be careful walking because the ground is like extremely slippery. It's like everything's made of glass. Alright, well we're approaching 6.30 a.m. now. We're still holding at 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're nearing the end of this all-nighter, keeping this food forest alive. To be honest, I'm feeling a bit anxious. Um, 
not just for this whole sprinkler setup, but just to see how everything fared. It got much colder than I thought it would. I didn't think that we were gonna dip down to 26. I think we were right at the threshold of hitting 25 degrees actually. And I don't know how well this is coming out on camera right now, but it's looking like a winter wonderland out here. Just icicles galore. There's like the comfrey plant, frosted over. The abundant tree kale, it's actually looking really good. It started flowering recently and I did a pruning on it. That's why you don't see all the huge leaves on here. But the plant itself is looking good. Here's the other tree kale that I just featured the other day. And this was getting hit with some of that water. So it's just coated with ice right now. And citrus here. Again, I don't want to fiddle with stuff. Everything is like frozen solid right now. But if you look at like the, the newest growth on here, I mean, it's looking pretty good. Look at that peach tree. Is that crazy or what? And I know I've said it several times, but I just want to reiterate that the objective was to keep the water coming down so that the ice never had a chance to haze over. And because everything has got clear icicles on it, I'm thinking that uh, we're golden. <laughs> 